Uh, it's, it's Chris here doing this, this Instagram live feed. So um, welcome to the feed, and I just want to say thanks to everybody for, uh, for joining in today. A um, couple quick things up front. Um, first off, I hope everyone's well, and uh, thanks to our awesome comms team. We have a, a bunch of FAQs up on the undergrad page, which gives you kind of the latest up-to-date info on, uh, on things that are going on and uh, all the all the stuff we've been working on. There's a lot going on in the background, but uh, uh, we're working hard. Uh, we know what everyone's going through, so we're here for you guys. Uh, hope everyone's got your coffee ready to go. This is a virtual coffee with Chris. Um, the other thing is um, we're monitoring chat, so if you've, anyone has uh, particular personal questions, we'll fire them and, and do with them sort of separately if you don't want to put it on the, uh, on the open uh, discussion. So um, now what? <laughs> This is open, I'm in my backyard. So I hope everyone's doing well. So can everyone hear me? Okay, great. So um, let's see now, waiting for chat questions. Oh, plans for exams. All right, so first question, plans for exams. So we are literally uh, working on that as we speak. Um, we will be putting out messaging later on this afternoon to everyone about what we're going to do for that. As you all know, obviously, we're not doing in-person exams. Uh, and we're going to come up with, uh, each of your instructors is going to be coming up with strategies. Um, they'll be bouncing it by you, getting your opinions and, and stuff. Some of you may have already had um, some feedback or some, some discussions with your instructors, which is awesome. Um, they're all going to be working with you to make sure that this whole term uh, works well for everybody. Uh, we understand all the pressures you're under, um, the challenges, and, and we're going to make it all work out. Um, whether this is capstone, whether it's design, whether it's calculus. <laughs> um, so uh, have no fear. Everything's under control as best we can, but uh, you should hear from instructors later today. We're getting messaging out to them. Um, we'll get this worked out. Um, let's, we were trying to get through this week first, make sure all of our online stuff worked out first. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So stay tuned. Uh, more or less in control. Oh, that was it. Oh, you guys, come on. I want a good question. Oh, wait. Uh, international students with access. No access to Quirkus, managed school. So uh, we're working on that as well. Um, we understand for some students who maybe uh, have gone home and may having may having issues getting in through the site. We're gonna we've actually brought that up with our IT folks about how we can try to work that through. So uh, stay tuned on that. Um, we'll be trying to send out messaging as we get information on that. Uh, I'm kind of these things are spewing up the system. Okay, so summer session questions. Great question. Um, right now, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, summer session will still run. Um, the university's posted up information that they'll either be offered online or, or in person. Um, stay tuned. Um, that's going to continue to roll out uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've been having regular sessions uh, to discuss that. Um, credit, no credit for masters. Oh, let's see. PNG. Oh, same question. Hang on. So. Um, it should not, uh, they all count as a, as a past course on your, uh, on your transcript. Won't have an impact on your GPA if you do that. Um, they will still uh, you know, require minimum standards. I think it's important to remember that grad school in particular um, is not so focused on your grades. It's going to be, uh, there are lots of other factors, almost in a way, the same way we do broad-based admissions. This is, a, this is really a global challenge right now. This is, we're not the only school that has this issue. So all the schools are actively working on that. Um, a, key, a key parameter here, folks, um, we're not, uh, you will have the chance to look at your grades before you make that decision to go uh, credit, no credit. So um, if your grade looks good, that's awesome. Um, uh, so keep that in mind. So um, yeah, and any dropped or no no credit course, core courses will need to be repeated. So uh, this may affect your plan going forward. The key here, uh, regardless of where you are in your program, whether it's first through fourth, uh, talk to your undergrad advisors. Um, they'll have the definitive answers on that. Um, we're, we're working on this. Sorry to keep disappearing out of the view, view of field of view here. Many of us don't have to, yes, we know that for sure. Um, so um, the, um, 
the que this is the question was about uh, internet access. If if people are are remote and have really bad internet, which includes people, including me, bad internet at the back of my house, um, we're well aware of that, and uh, we're going to be building in those sort of accommodations uh, into the way we design uh, all the finals in particular. Um, we're also working with accessibility and test services to develop strategies that would allow folks. Um, who have other kinds of accommodations to uh, make sure that's also brought into the system. Um, so uh, be well aware of that. Uh, how, uh, oh, I lost that question. Um, uh, will we get to vote on changes to the syllabus? Yes, um, your instructors are all going to be uh, providing you with uh, what they see as the, their latest version, given the complications here. Depends a lot on your courses. Some of your courses, you know, obviously, if you get on, you know, presentations and all that kind of stuff at the end, they'll adjust how they do that. But you will all get a chance to provide input to your instructors going forward on what that looks like. Um, this would be for the engineering courses. Um, I can't speak a, about courses that you may be taking in other faculties. Um, this is this is engineering specific right now. Oh, uh, this will come out later today. Messaging around the finals. Oh, uh, yeah, we're working on the discussion around credit, no credit for team and, and, and project-based courses. Um, that's a little more complex. Those are nuances that are going to go and be very dependent on the individual courses themselves. Um, so uh, that discussion is, is underway. Um, best is to talk with the instructors, um, but we are working on that. We're well aware that those are particularly challenging opportunities uh, or opportunities, challenging situations for, uh, for everyone. I look at these. Can we? Uh, uh, yeah, if you're in a different time zone on the final, we're we're compensating you for that. Um, yeah, worst case, people are tw are 12 hours out of phase. Um, we're going to work on on assessing how that's going to be uh, developed. It'll v depend very much on the nature of the assessment that the individual class is going to run. Um, it may be something where, and I don't know, it depends on your courses. If it's something that's a hand in assignment, then we'll adjust for the, the appropriate time for that has to have to be delivered. Um, we certainly don't want to be in a situation where uh, you know, it's four in the morning, you've got to write your exam. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, the other thing, for those who, who uh, have been asking and who may be away right now, um, one of the things we're working on is trying to uh, encourage all of our instructors to record their lectures so that those who happen to be in weird time zones aren't forced, hope everyone can still hear me, aren't forced to um, get up in the middle of the night to watch a lecture. We're, we're asking them, and this is now up on everybody's Quirkus site, um, to ask them to hit that record button um, on their any BB Collaborate or whatever system they're using uh, so they can have that and, and you can go back to that lecture. Uh, we're certainly encouraging folks to do that. Um, so uh, uh, keep that in mind. If you aren't any problems, let, just let me know and we'll follow up. Oh, <laughs> it's a good thing to have a question. Sorry, I will repeat the questions uh, as I go forward. Okay. Um, oh, will convocation happen? So <laughs> that is not something we've been we've been focused on at the moment. Um, decisions around that are are coming forth. Um, I, so I don't have an answer for that at the moment, but I will let you know what happens as things go forward. Um, please don't take a look at what other universities are doing and assume that that's what U of T is doing. Um, not quite fair. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're, all that sort of stuff is in, in play, so um, lots of discussions underway. So just wait for official news from, uh, from the official U of T channels as opposed to unofficial news. Uh, so next question is, will summer courses go ahead, and if so, how? Um, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, at the moment, summer sessions are still being planned. We've, wording has gone out through all the registrarial pages that courses may be offered either online or in person. Um, just to kind of give a little bit of room, hopefully all this kind of goes away and, and we, can go, we can restore ourselves back to normal. Um, but we're not sure yet what's going to happen, so stay tuned uh, for summer courses. So I got a question here. Oh, just managed. So a question about final exams for M engines. Again, um, we're focused 
the message you're going out today is going to focus on undergraduate. Graduate courses will be discussed um, next. So uh, we're trying to get the undergraduate things worked out at the moment, and then we'll focus on the graduate program. It's really kind of a question of bandwidth, actually, within, the, uh, within our instructors and everyone right now. So there was a question about graduate fellowships affected during this period. No, everyone's graduate stipends and fellowships continue. Um, the, uh, so students who are on uh, TA ships, those all remain in play. Um, our TAs will, will remain available to all undergraduate students in terms of delivering coursework. So everything's basically continuing as if um, normal, as far as normal goes in terms of everyone kind of being online. So uh, the next question was, how will credit and non-credit affect scholarships where certain average is required? So that'll depend on the agency that's looking at those scholarships. Um, obviously, if you, end, if you know credit, that means there's nothing to look at. And that's why we're giving you guys, giving everyone, sorry, the ability to look at your final grades and make a decision as to whether you want that on your transcript or not. Um, so that's about as much I can say in terms of scholarships. I don't know. All the, all the tri cancel and granting agencies will end up having to look at what this means. Um, again, this is global. This is not just a U of T problem. This is not just a Canadian problem. This is a problem for, for every jurisdiction around the world. So I think everybody knows that they have to apply significant flexibility right now, this year in particular, from going forward, and, and obviously for the next few years as everyone kind of rolls up through the system. Oh, I got a question here. For which type of engineering is U of T known for? Well, the answer to that is all engineering. Uh, all of our engineering programs are, are super strong. We've got a nice core eight program. Uh, every single discipline is represented. So uh, please refer to our admissions place. And we look forward to, uh, to welcoming you to U of T engineering in the future. So a good question just came up, will PEY go on? So uh, a couple things there. For those who are on PEY, um, we are working, our PEY office and Roger in particular is working, and his team are working very hard to, uh, to manage the students who are currently on PEY, manage that very complex situation about what they're doing during their individual work terms. Uh, in particular, if they happen to be in the US, for instance, um, or abroad, and what does that mean for their internships? Um, they are working with that uh, at the moment. Uh, we'll have to see what that means for, for the next cohort that would be heading out into jobs. I do not know, and, and my suggestion for that would be to, to contact Roger, uh, the, the PY office, and just you know, kind of ask the question. I think they are, well, they would be certainly working on what does that mean um, for the, the cohort that in principle would be heading out um, in a couple of months. Uh, we're concerned right now with the students who are abroad on PY, um, even the ones in the city who who've, um, you know, need to go to work or not go to work or how they're able to work at home or what are the companies doing depending on the nature of the business they're in. Um, it's an interesting learning opportunity actually for all of us uh, as we roll this forward. Um, oh, so I got a, a reminder because I'm new to this. So for those who just joined, and we're now... Oh, we're 15 minutes in. So, uh, yeah, welcome to uh, coffee, a virtual coffee with Chris in my backyard. Um, remind everyone that the FAQs, as we build them up, are going to be posted up on, the, uh, on our engineering the undergrad page. So lots of information there about, about our plans going forward. Um, and we're, uh, we're going to be sharing soon the current plan for final exams, sorry, final assessment. Um, as everyone knows, we're, we're not doing in-person exams, so there's no need to worry about that. Um, but everything is going to be going to another form of assessment, and this will be instructor and course dependent. And we will be asking you for your suggestions. Uh, well, <laughs> suggestions from your instructors will be approaching you and and, folk, and talking to you about uh, their plans and getting your your feedback on that going forward. So this is the messaging that's going to be going out later today. So stay tuned. Um, we're focused. We have been focused this past week really on making sure that all the the backbone infrastructure to keep your lectures going. Um, you, know, you know, tuning everybody, getting everybody used to flipping to this online system and this kind of new reality. And, and I think managing a lot of the stress that we know everyone's under in terms of 
of having to relocate or get back home or deal with travel and all that sort of stuff. We wanted to get through this week first, make sure everybody's um, you know, secure and, and, and things are stable, and, and then we'll, we'll start to deal with uh, these other issues going forward. So please don't, uh, don't take our lack of info as, as anything more than, than we're trying to do our best to, uh, to work this out. Don't touch the screen, I'm pausing. Nope, that could be just me dropping. Uh, yes, so the question was around the internet access. So um, a question was, will exams be timed? What do we do if we have bad internet access? So again, we're well aware of the challenges around accessibility, both technical accessibility as well as individual accessibilities. So we're, um, we're focused on, on developing strategies and assessment strategies that will, will allow students, everyone, to, to do the best they can um, on those individual tests. So please don't get too concerned about whether you, you know, you're gonna drop it. We, we know that that's happening. Um, the world knows that that's happening right now. Um, conference call systems are going down because there's too many people on conference calls. Um, just as a point of fact, I was talking to a friend and his company had 12,000 Zoom sessions running at the same time. Um, just to give you an idea of the, the internet bandwidth challenge that's going on right now. So for anyone who's an EC student, this is an awesome opportunity to understand the challenges that sit in network infrastructure. So uh, communications is the place to be right now. Uh, will we still have internship? So uh, is this is in the context of PUI. So again, uh, the PUI program is, is continuing. Um, we are well aware of the challenges in terms of the corporates, um, companies being able to take on PUIs. Um, things may be a little bit on pause right now. We're, we just don't know what's gonna happen in the next couple of months. So I think it's important to kind of keep that in mind. Um, we're gonna do our best we can. Uh, this, you know, we've got issues even now within you know research and summer research opportunities with with labs and how those are going to get affected um, or altered um, into new and interesting ways actually for people to continue research programs so uh, stay tuned um, we'll work or the PEY on the ECC office are working hard Yeah, just want to you know reiterate that that um, all of our final assessments, um, all of our instructors, um, the registrar's office, the chairs, associate chairs, the vice deans, and so on, um, we're we're all focused on ensuring that accessibility accommodations, all of that is is brought uh, to the forefront in our discussions and our plans around final assessment and course assessment. Um, this is super important to us. Uh, it's super important to me. I want to make sure everyone succeeds as best they, you know, given the context. So um, this is why we made that big move to uh, to go percentage grade, credit, non-credit for all of our courses, including cores, um, giving you the opportunity to look at your final grades before you make the decision um, and, and kind of removing as many barriers as we could um, and also allowing folks who, students who, who may have dropped um, as of that March 9th date uh, a course because they saw this university shutting, you know, closing on campus to kind of revisit that decision. So um, we're, we're bringing in as much flexibility as we can. Uh, we're well aware of what's going on. Um, for those who are worried about accreditation and gradu graduation stuff um, of the programs in general, um, almost immediately when this happened, uh, CAB and, and the engineering deans um, all got on board with ensuring that accreditation is not affected by what's going on right now. It's not affecting the, uh, the mechanisms of delivery. It's not affecting the AU, all that kind of background policy stuff. It's all being managed. So, you know, this, this is an unprecedented challenge for everybody and uh, we're well aware of, of the impact and, and everybody's working to minimize that impact. Uh, oh, yeah, so question was grad courses. So yes, uh, the focus right now is undergraduate because that's two thirds of our student population or almost three quarters of our student population. So we're focused on that. Grad course information is coming out shortly. Um, there are a lot of challenges with grad students 
um, because some grad students take undergrad courses and vice versa. So uh, that's still in play. It's a little bit uh, more, a little bit more manageable in some respects, but uh, more information on that is coming forward. Um, there was a question about what if BV collaborates not available in my home country. Um, universities aware of this and trying to figure out strategies to do that. Uh, we know certain countries have um, pretty stringent firewall considerations and and we're working on on ways uh, saying that we're working on ways around a firewall is probably not the most politically correct way to say but we're working on technical strategies which will allow you to to access the online strategies uh, if convocate oh so good that's a great question um, if convocation is canceled will it be postponed to a later date yeah, you know, we know that convocation for folks is a super important thing. Um, we know that uh, this is a chance for, for you to, to for you to see your your friends and family to see you graduate and, and going through con hall and so on. We're we're this is something I think that the university broadly is gonna be thinking about going forward. Um, uh, so I don't have an past. Um, in particular, we've actually run remote convocations. Um, in particular in Hong Kong for, for um, students there and, and families who weren't able to come over for convocation. The, the presidents often had a delegation go over a couple of years and actually kind of do a, a redo a convocation. So stay tuned. We'll see what we can come up with on that side. So there's a question about capstone and credit, non-credit. So I think the key here is remember that you we're back. Sorry, my internet connection's breaking up here. So we do have credit, um, uh, non-credit, uh, fourth-year thesis, and so on. So this is going to be up to each individual uh, department to kind of manage. Uh, we okay, sorry, my internet's kind of dropping out here. Um, we are, yeah. So we're aware of the credit, non-credit issues around capstone. So uh, we'll be working with those those departments to figure out the best strategy for that. Uh, how will so next question was how will summer research internship awards like NSERC and SROP be impacted? So the, cha the the real challenge there is more broadly than than that is is will we be able to offer the summer research internships uh, in their present form and and depends that's going to depend a lot on the nature of the research projects that people were planning to do. Um, as many people will know, uh, actually maybe undergrads may not know, the um, the the university is closing all research on-campus lab research. So I just point out that's on-campus lab research as of 5 p.m. today. That doesn't mean that the research operation of the university is closed. Uh, it just means that people are switching to what they can do remotely, what they can do in different forms. So a lot of labs are, are this is you know, a prime opportunity for faculty to work on research programs and proposals. It's also a great opportunity for students um, to be involved in projects that involve sort of data analysis. Um, from my own lab, image analysis, we have huge amounts of data that <laughs> frankly need a lot of work and don't require us to park ourselves in front of a microscope. So there's lots of things like that that allow people to continue their research activity um, despite not being able to access the lab. There will be certain labs that are allowed to stay open in particular if they're doing work on, on COVID uh, specifically so those are those are exceptions to the rule what about APS courses so in the, again for APS courses that are uh, so the question was what about APS courses uh, these are taken by both grad and undergrads will final exams be canceled so again as I said before um, every instructor uh, we'll be reaching out or we'll be just presenting to the students to, of the courses, APS, um, any course which is taught by engineering faculty to our students to go over the plans for the final assessment strategies. Um, there may be a final exam, but it just may switch to a completely different format. There may be final assignments. This will all be very much course dependent. Um, you will get a chance to consult. The instructors will all consult with you as to, the, to what, they, what is collectively the best approach going forward. Um, and circ is quite strict. Oh, no, that's a good. Oh, so actually, maybe back up. There was a question about grad ceremony. So yes, uh, we don't have a decision about grad ceremony, but stay tuned. We'll let everyone know what's going on there. 
The next question here was about NSERC has quite strict hour requirements. Will online research be acceptable to fill those in? I, again, uh, I mean, I would be just well, all the agencies, everyone's well aware of what's going on right now. And so uh, for them to not be flexible about some of these hours, it would be silly. So from my opinion, my perspective, I think everyone's going to be quite liberal in their interpretation of research activity in labs um, and so on. So I, I would not get too concerned about that. Uh, how will credit not credit uh, affect dean's list and scholarships? So again, we're we will exam committee and so on will be and the awards committee are working to look at that process. Um, we will have clear defined guidelines on that um, before the end of term. Uh, so uh, we've already been in discussions with the chair of, of both those committees, um, and they are actively think or actively consulting as to how to manage those discussions. Again, it's important to remember, we're only focused right now on the current semester. Um, so this is one out of eight semesters that people are focused on. So, uh, you know, you're always looking at the holistic package um, for students going forward uh, and for these things. So um, there's a lot of, everyone's going to have asterisks on, you know, winter 2020. So uh, we're all uh, quite aware of, of that consideration. So, uh, yeah, and, and sorry, let me just back up as well. For those going to look into grad schools, again, grad school, when you apply to a graduate school, in particular research graduate school, it's not focused on marks. Uh, selection into grad school is very much focused on a whole bunch of other factors beyond just what grade you got in a particular course. It's very much focused on your interest, um, the match with the lab, the match with the project, the match with your skill set. So uh, grades are for sure not the big picture for going into any kind of graduate program. Oh shoot, that one just did. Uh... Oh, hang on, let's see. Uh... Oh, so <laughs> I'm gonna turn this around on you folks now. Um, so uh, I'd love to get some opinion and perspective from you on how things are going for you. Um, what are you doing to, uh, uh, how you're navigating learning at home? How are you finding the experience? Um, just like, give me some feedback. How's it going? Got a lot of thumbs up, but I'm not sure if that's about me on this session or that you're really enjoying stuff at home right now or wherever you happen to be. Uh, there's more thumbs up. So let me, let me give you a quick, a quick blurb on, on life at the Dean's, the other Dean's house. Um, so, uh, it's interesting. It, every day kind of feels like a Saturday, just only with a lot of conference calls and a lot of meetings. Um, I think it's, uh, as you might imagine, this is this has been a um, it's been an interesting transition for everybody, and and we're doing our best uh, to manage. On me, from a personal perspective, uh, as many of you know, uh, my my strategy for for relaxation is is to try and get outside, like I am right now. This is why I'm doing this presentation outside and not sitting inside of my office. Um, to, uh, to just kind of get some time and, and just to ponder and uh, you know, decompress as best I can. So going for a run, going for a walk, maintaining mega social distance as best I can. Uh, so a lot of solo running, um, that kind of stuff uh, is helping. Um, I will admit to uh, catching up on a lot of Netflix right now as well. So uh, you, can, you can ask me what I'd like to watch there if, if, if that would help. Oh, and I am learning to cook a lot more stuff. So I will I will bake a loaf of bread and show it to people. So actually, there's a really great question someone just posted, just flipped on the screen here and said that group projects are challenging over time zones. So um, yeah, they are. And to be fair, that's an interesting um, reflection on how projects are rolling out across multinationals nowadays and actually this is one of the ways that that software projects actually rolled out worldwide is that people ran on 24-hour cycles and and companies that did big software projects would literally place labs and and development shops in different time zones so they could hand off the software 
and basically run on a 24-hour development cycle. So you did eight hours of work in Toronto and you'd hand it off to the group in Europe and then the group in Europe would pick it up and hand it off to the group in Israel and Israel hand it off to the group in China and go forward. So um, kind of an interesting way to, to figure out the best ways to maintain continuity project-wise um, when you can't get in touch with people face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, so there's always, I, I'm an optimistic guy, there's always a, a silver lining to some of these challenges. Um, we're learning even within administration right now and in the university how to manage um, this this weird transition. Um, I, I frankly, and I, I have to give a huge shout out to the entire engineering team for their ability, and actually the university, for their ability to really pivot as of Friday to go from what you know was a pretty complex situation to an even more complex situation. We rolled everything out online in literally you know 48 hours. And, I'm super proud of the team for their ability to do that. You know, it's it's everything from managing the IT rollout to making sure our staff and and everyone's safe and 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 just managing that entire transition while while keeping everything going. So, um, a huge shout out to the team uh, and and to yourselves as well for all the support you've given to our to our uh, our staff and, and the faculty and and for being able to manage this as well. I understand. You know, I know this is a really tough time for everybody. Other questions? I just lost my other thing. Oop. Ah. Okay. Uh, applicants for the 20... Oh, so interest... Yeah, so for, there was an interesting question about applications for the 2020, 2021 year. Um, so admission cycles are still rolling. In fact, um, everything is still going as just we're just not physically there so we've transitioned to a completely online system well, it's actually online anyways it's just now it's a remote online system so all those decisions are rolling forward everyone's uh we're working um there are some clear challenges uh around admission now in particular since um as you may know sort of half the world's population of people going to school are actually now not in school um, so that's that's presenting a challenge for everybody going forward. So you know we're we're working with the registrar's office and and all the individual departments on the admission side are working with the university is well aware of these challenges going forward. So uh, another question on the finals, Disney World. Um, another question on finals. Um, so again, uh, for those who joined late, uh, we are uh, going to be working on the finals. Uh, process of finals assessment, the exam, uh, all your instructors will be reaching out and working with you to develop uh, the best strategies going forward around how to do final assessments for the courses that everybody's in. This is all going to come out, this is straight from engineering right now, excuse me, we're going to be doing that going forward um, and uh, you'll get a chance to, uh, to provide your input to the faculty members as to what, what that would look like. Um, again, we're, we're well aware of all the challenges, whether it's the timing, uh, internet ta access, ex individual accessibility for those who, who may be using test and accessibility services and may now actually not be uh, in Toronto. So we're well aware of those challenges and, and we will uh, work with everybody on how to address those uh, going forward, whether it's the deferred exam or other strategies going forward. So, so please uh, be patient and, and we are working on those. Oh, this is a good question. Uh, a lot of assignments. Were, so we will be working with all the faculty members around accommodations for assignments. I mean, don't forget the courses are still running. Faculty members are, are doing stuff as best they can. Um, we are asking faculty to be as flexible as possible on things. So keep me posted. Um, will domestic PYs be impacted? If so, how? Uh, well, pretty clearly they're going to be impacted because it depends on the companies where people were going to be going to for jobs and internships um, 
given the way that that industry and everyone's being asked to to you know basically put a pause right now that's certainly going to impact everything going forward so um, important to keep that in mind uh, our PY office uh, the ECC our staff there are doing the best they can to to work with uh, current students who are currently on PY and students who are look or will be or potentially going out on PY to understand whether those companies and, and how are they managing this particular uh, situation um, again this is not um, not something that that anyone had anticipated going forward so um, Please, you know, please keep that in mind. Um, if you start to raise, you know, those kind of questions to the PY office, uh, this is this is why they're there. This is what they're doing actively, um, full time, trying to work on this. So again, uh, questions on academic standing for using non or credit, no credit. So again, credit means the class is passed. Uh, no credit effectively doesn't show up. So um, always. Uh, for those kind of questions, work with your undergraduate advisor to provide the best uh, best suggestions for your individual situation. Again, I want to reinforce that um, the decision about whether you're taking a grade, the actual grade, um, credit or no credit, is going to come back to um, a week after the, the final exams are released. So you do not need to make any crash or critical decisions right now about all that stuff. Just Let's make it through the term. Let's make it through the final assessment. Let's make it and get everybody's packages fully wrapped up um, and then see what that looks like for you. And then you can make a decision uh, after you see that and after you individually consult on um, you know, yourselves around what your game plan is going forward. Again, work with your departmental advisors, your undergraduate advisors uh, on that going forward. And you know, we're going to be taking all of this stuff into consideration um, especially around first year students going into into second year uh, yeah so another question showed up same question of course uh, it's going to be around academic standing with credit no credit again the promotions committee is well aware of these these situations and we'll be working with every student to look or everybody's transcript are basically looking at those questions uh, as we go forward the, the go forward uh, position right now is um, we've been discussing this actually yesterday um, is to ensure that uh, every student is treated fairly um, and not unduly uh, negatively impacted by what's going on right now for everybody um, so uh, be well aware of that there was a question about full year courses so again with full year courses we have honestly you know about two-thirds of those grades are actually in play right now so They'll be working with that, and, and for thesis and design courses, which are full year, again, individual instructors uh, for thesis, individual thesis supervisors um, will all be advised to uh, apply as much flexibility or to be as flexible as possible and accommodating as possible. Um, I think, you know, to, to, uh, I, I, to be fair, I cannot see any faculty members seeing this as, as uh, nothing, as, as a way to not work with every single student in the class and every single student in their labs uh, to ensure everybody's uh, full success going forward. Um, we're committed to ensuring that you're successful. Um, whether you're in first year and you want to get uh, your track one, you make sure that you get into the program you're interested in. Whether you're a fourth year looking to graduate, whether you're a third year trying to go into a PEY opportunity, um, we're, gonna, we're doing our best to make sure that uh, uh, we are able to to hit all those boxes as best we can, given what is truly a, a continually flux, uh, changing situation, right? Every day it changes, every hour it changes. Um, so uh, stay tuned. We'll keep, I'm trying to keep everyone up to date as well. Ah, so there's a, so a great question. And this is one, you know, I can relate as well. Like how is mental health being addressed? It's pretty depressing to be cooped up at home. Um, and not being able to socialize with people physically. Completely agree with you. Um, I, miss, uh, I miss meeting with my colleagues. I miss, I miss the camaraderie around, the, around the, the virtual coffee table, as it were. Um, it's super challenging. Um, what, we're, what we're doing, and, and I, uh, we've been talking amongst all the chairs, so just to let you know, every, every day at 5 o'clock, we're having a, a conference call with all the chairs and directors uh, of of the departments of engineering, all the vice deans and so on, and, and working out strategies. And this one around, you know, that means common rooms are closed and then the library started to close and, and all this sort of stuff. And, and 
this whole sort of shelter, you know, everybody has to stay at home and, and or, well, sorry, I'm, my phone's dying, too much cell service. Um, what we've been proposing and, and we've set up is that we've, we're building out, um, you know, virtual common rooms, as it were, and, and trying to set those up for each department. So I think that NSI is looking at doing this right now. Um, EC, I think, has a discussion forum running. Um, we're looking at creating sort of virtual common rooms um, where people can kind of, you know, literally zoom in um, at and, and try to, as best we can, interact with folks. We realize it's not quite the same as being able to physically have a coffee with someone, but um, it's the best we can do right now, and it's kind of one strategy. Um, things like this is one way to at least uh, sort of connect with the team, as it were. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to me if you want to chat. Uh, not as common as you had said. In my limited experience, profs create a solution to move the courses online, but actual courses haven't changed. So again, uh, we're the, we still have course content to deliver, so that's not changing at all. Um, we're still trying to hit those marks. The, the issue around accommodation is, is developing strategies to, to, you know, as best we can deliver that content online. Some of you who are in Civ would have seen the video of, of Professor Taylor uh, doing his his online lecture with the class. Um, we're trying to reinforce this to all our faculty to, to do their best in terms of being able to deliver this. We're hoping, I'm hoping in particular at faculty, so we're hoping that that's the case, um, but uh, we'll continue to reinforce that point. I, I take it. Um, Uh, so a nice question here around credit and non-credit for year-long courses. Again, yes, this will be the option for percentage credit and non-credit is available for all engineering courses going forward. So for sure this term, which makes sense, and then for year-long ones as well, um, that's in play. So um, again, we'll put we'll we'll maybe update that on the FAQ uh, on the undergrad site just to just to make that clear. Uh oh. So yeah, so um, can anybody give me a sense of, of strategies? I mean, actually, here's a question. I mean, how many people are actually not in Toronto right now? How many have actually been able to make it home? How's that working for folks? Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, so summer courses are still in play. Um, it's just that we've posted whether they, we're not sure whether it be online or, or they may be delivered online or in person. So. Uh, stay tuned for that. Information on that is on, on, uh, in play. Um, question about admissions. So yes, the admissions committee, um, in terms of the high school grades, well aware of the challenges from the high school side. This is, again, a global problem. Um, we will work as best we can around what happens on that. Uh, situations are constantly in flux, even within the province right now. So. Um, you will have seen that Ontario just rolled out an online system for courses, um, so stay tuned. Everything's con constantly moving right now. Any updates on ECF remote capacity? So I will let you know that we, we work quite actively with, with ECF, and so ECF has now deployed and, and opened up, and I can double check with them. They should have opened it up so there's close to 800 machines available for remote access. They've redeployed the pool um, they've opened it up from what was 150 machines, which is really kind of a firewall limitation, um, now to a to, uh, much larger pool. They've redeployed all the departmental ECF machines uh, to be part of the, the remote desktop protocol machines um, and then spun up a lot more VMs. So if you do run into problems on that side, um, please let ECF know. Um, and, and they're actively working on all that kind of IT stuff from the back from the uh, from their side and uh, they're keeping me up to date on what's going on in that component so if you're running into challenges again please let me know uh, please tell instructors to not make the finals unpurposely harder um, again this this is that's in nobody's interest to do that um, the, the key here is that we are trying to make this process and roll out as seamless and as smooth and we have everyone's best interest in mind. Um, the perception that faculty make exams a lot harder on purpose is I think kind of misconstrued. It, that doesn't serve anyone well to do something like that. So um, I don't know why anyone would do that. Um, and as someone who's taught for 20 
three odd years at the university, I have never made an exam purposely harder. Um, in fact, that, yeah, anyways, that's my perspective. Will the exam schedule be relevant? Yes, because the exam schedule is being set, um, that means final, whatever is defined will then be due um, by those days. We will not make anything due earlier, which that doesn't make any sense, but everything else rolling along the normal timetables is still in play. Um, it's just the nature of what that what needs to be handed in by a given time uh, as reflected in the schedule um, may change uh, or will change sorry because it's not an in-person exam okay the other thing that's important we will not which makes a ton of sense will not be provide not be delivering any new material beyond the end of term so uh, everything ends when it ends as if it's the normal lecture schedule if we know credit a course can it be taken again yes um, that makes sense. So yes, you'll be required to take it, especially if it's a core course. Um, yes. Will the summer term be offered this year, especially for graduate students? So again, the university continues to run, just albeit in an online fashion right now. So um, everything is still a go. There's been no official word around cancellation of literally anything. Um, all of that will come down from the from above, uh, from the provost or the president, around what they do around summer sessions. So. At the moment, summer sessions are going to continue. Um, courses will still be in play. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they may, they're, they're wording around the registrarial pages all around um, online or in person. Uh, and again, that will, may change depending on the situation uh, from the public health perspective. So um, assume everything's going forward as if um, this wasn't happening. So we have the option to credit, no credit thesis. Um, I guess that was sort of, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, the option to present credit or no credit every single course. So you could no credit a thesis. I'm not sure why you would do that um, versus just take the credit because you did work unless, um, again, talk to, in that particular case, I would talk to your supervisor to decide whether that makes sense. And, and again, talk to your advisor or your undergrad advisors to get see how that positions you for your actual individual um, uh, study programs. From a personal perspective, I'm not sure why you would no credit a thesis project, um, but there may be other reasons. What do you recommend? Okay, so this is let me switch off all the all the other stuff. What do you rec recommend watching on Netflix? Yeah, so um, there is all sorts of interesting stuff. Um, I will admit to watching Kingdom, which is which is that Korean weird zombie series. Um, that was interesting. Um, what else did I watch recently? Um, I was going to say Black Mirror, but that open book exams are challenging. They're actually quite difficult to, in fact, set. Um, so I can't comment on, on that, per se. And, and again, um, it, exam difficulties are always in the nature of the person writing the exam, to be fair. Um, Uh, yeah, push something here. Here, hopefully, I'm not turn you guys off. All right, let me try something. Some people are asking me on the video, and I haven't figured out if I'm actually messing this up here. So, stand by. Yeah. So, uh, I, <laughs> sorry, Liz. Uh, I got a comment from a comms team, check teams. I would check teams, except my laptop just ran out of power. So um, I may need to disappear for a second and, and find my charger.
like oral presentations, we're going to do is do them by Zoom. Um, it'll it'll depend a lot on the nature of the course itself. So stay tuned. All your instructors will get in touch with you. We'll be working with you around the nature of the final assessment, and they will be consulting with you on that. Okay. Oh, this is a tough one. What if I cannot come back to Canada after the summer, which would be spent back in China? Uh, that is a tough question. Um, I do not know the answer to that. Um, we'll flag that for the registrar and actually for the university as a whole, because um, as you, as people are well aware, we have a huge international population uh, of students at U of T, whether they're in engineering or just broadly. Um, huge challenge going forward. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, university doesn't know the answer to that. Um, I think the country doesn't know the answer to that because we don't know what the situation will be in September. Um, we don't even know the situation is going to be like, like tomorrow. So um, we just have to roll and adapt with what's going forward. Um, it's a great, great question. Um, if I get an answer, uh, university gets an answer, they'll certainly be letting everyone know. Okay, so um, hope you guys found this useful. Um, I will try to probably do another one of these. We'll fix the technology. I'll get my laptop charged. But again, um, remind everyone, take good care of yourselves. Um, be sure to take breaks. Uh, I know this is a tough time for everybody, but it's important that you take your breaks, uh, relax, go for a walk, maintain social distance, all that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, do keep in touch. Uh, I love hearing from you guys, so please keep doing that. Um, reminder to check the FAQs that are on the uh, engineering webpage. Um, we'll continue to update those um, as with as much information as we can. Um, I apologize for all the emails going out to you guys, but uh, to everyone, but um, it's super important. We're trying to make sure they're as clear as possible. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. More stuff coming out later today. Um, and we'll keep everyone up to date with things. Um, again, uh, feel free to reach out uh, to the to your chairs, to your department advisors. Uh, everyone's here to help everyone succeed uh, going through this. So uh, stay tuned and uh, again, take care with everyone. All right. And my, my coffee's cold now. Take care, everyone. <laughs>